Sen Max Nzoia ninajivunia kuwa mkatoliki Ashering us into the second of the morning tide on Radio Wow Mini 88.3 FM and as I told you my dear listener uh, that we kicked off uh, the answers from a Catholic segment and today is that a day that we are joined um, with my brother Ram here and I told you that today we're going to be focusing on this beautiful week where we are praying for Christian unity okay and what is your role in it as a Catholic by the way that is why Ram is here this morning to answer all your questions but to that 0712223385 or on Facebook page Radio Mini 88.3 FM still remains the SMS line in case you have a query. Ram will respond to it. But in the meantime, happy new year, my brother Ram. Happy new year, happy new year, Abraham. Uko salama? Kabisa, kabisa. Eh? Yes, yes. I just press for me that uh, the, the, the other okay. Yes, the other one. The other okay, good. Thank you. Yes. Happy new year. Happy new year, happy new year. Hey, bon, a long time <laughs> it's no been see. A good, good. <laughs> Ndiko tumeenda likizo sasa India tumerudi. Ndio tumerudi. Jeu unaonekana ulikuwa likizo. Sisi tulikuwa kazi. Okay. So pleasure to be back lakini. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you as well. Yeah, how have you been? Uh, we are alive mm-hmm. uh, pushing trying to settle into 2024 venye inatukimbiza already. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, na January bado <laughs> nasikia ngajani na kuanga na 45 days. Bado inajikokota. Mazi. We are up to the task right. Uh, anyway, karibu sana Ram. And today we're going to be having a very interesting conversation. Mm. But for the benefit of those who are tuning in for the very first time, they're wondering who's Ram Kaili introduce yourself before we begin. Thank you. So my name is uh, Ram um or at least on the general Libandiko in Kiwa High School. <laughs> <laughs> it has stuck ever since. Yes. Um I'm a lawyer by training but a teacher by profession. Profession. Um, so I've been teaching um yeah for the last uh, many years in a private school and mm-hmm. then in a later in a fan- very fantastic uh, uh, public school a mm. mixed school right so um and in that experience of being with students high school students is is when i also fell in love with those, this whole thing of apologetics mm-hmm. and uh two or so years ago i met this group answers from a catholic mm-hmm. and uh, i think we had uh uh, a coming together of of ideals and of passions here so we said well maybe we can share all of this uh, good stuff that we have with people mm-hmm. so together as answers for catholic we try and not just come here when you will host us mm-hmm. here at radio mini for mm-hmm. this uh, segment but also try and go to parishes or to schools just to try and give the reasons as to why we believe what we believe all right why we believe what we believe and that is why you are here to make us understand even better yeah. so karibu sana ram and interestingly uh, bona ram we are in the week of prayer for christian unity correct why is it so important or should it be important to you and me and other Catholics listening to you and Christians listening to you this morning? I think the simplest answer to that question Mm -hmm. is that it should be important to you and me precisely because it was important to Christ. Okay. Um, How do we know it was important to Christ? Mm -hmm. Because um, at the Last Supper, uh, you can imagine like when when you have a close relative or parent who's about to pass away and Mm -hmm. they're trying to give you their last testament and will. Mm -hmm. Anything they will mention at at that last meeting they have with you kind of has a bit of more importance, Mm -hmm. right? And it was uh, during this uh, Last Supper when when Jesus precisely left us with the sacrament of the priesthood, the sacrament of the Eucharist, and St. John has that very long priestly prayer of Christ Mm -hmm. when he prays for quite a number of things. And one of the things that he prays for in that uh, priestly prayer precisely is for unity. Mm -hmm. When speaking to the Father, he tells him, look, Father, may they, these apostles that I have and those who will come to believe in us because of their word and their preaching, may they be one just as you and I are one. One, yeah. Right. So the reason why it should be something of concern, of active concern, sila unambi wangu, and yeah. you know, kind of the weeks pass, etc. But mm-hmm. something I am actively involved in is precisely because this is something that Jesus himself expressly prayed for. All right, expressly prayed for. And talking about Jesus Christ, then one could wonder, when did the practice of the week of prayer for Christian unity uh, begin? 
So from the research that I did, this uh, was something began by a gentleman called Paul Watson. Mm -hmm. um, he was an Anglican, actually, when he proposed it. This is back in 1908. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've already had this tradition going on for more than uh, 100 years, which I find remarkable. Mm -hmm. It's not something uh, very recent. Um, and when he proposed it, he was an Anglican. Later on in his life, he converted, he became Catholic. But already when he proposed it, the Catholic Church um, saw that, yeah, this is something that we ourselves are interested in. And as a Catholic Church, this is something that we ourselves should promote. Mm -hmm. So a number of popes like uh, Pope uh, Pius X and Pope Benedict XV, um, already uh, made steps towards making it something universal. So that is not just practiced in one uh, local church, you mm -hmm. know, the church in Italy or the church in, in France. No, but this is something for the entire church across the world. Mm -hmm. um, and started pushing that, you know, could we could we all take up this call to action, this call to unity um, and, and actively pray for it? So it began in 1908. Um, it became more or less universal or um, spread to the whole Catholic Church across the world in 1916. Mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, we are pushing it. The last three popes, I think, have, have also done a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm a bit biased because maybe I've only seen the last three popes. Yeah. I have not been that old to oh. see more than that. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but Pope John Paul the Great, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, and even now Pope Francis mm -hmm. are really, really pushing um, a lot that um, w this visible unity of Christians can become a reality. Okay. Yeah. And you'd realize that each year the World Council of Churches and the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity jointly assign a particular country oh. to prepare a material for uh, this particular uh, special week. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they settle, it is always celebrated in January. Correct. Tell us the dates and how important are those dates? So, um, so before... Uh, Vatican II, mm -hmm. they had chosen two very key dates. One was the Feast of St. Uh, Peter mm -hmm. and the other one was the Conversion of St. Paul. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So after the calendar of the church was revised in Vatican II, a number of these feasts were moved around. Mm -hmm. But the one of the Conversion of St. Paul was not moved. It mm -hmm. remains on the 25th of January. Okay. So every year, if you go for Mass on 25th of January, except mm -hmm. if 25th of January falls on a Sunday, mm -hmm. every year, 25th of January, the, the church remembers that extraordinary conversion of, of St. Paul. Saint Paul. Mm -hmm. um, and the church uses this as an occasion to um, precisely say, okay, fine, look, he himself, um, Paul, this is our soul, maybe we should call him before his conversion. Yeah. Um, this was the occasion when he came to see the truth of Christ mm -hmm. and embrace it. Okay. Right? And this is the same thing that all of us are being called to. Mm -hmm. And they took um, seven days to prepare for this feast more or less yeah mm -hmm. so again the church has this habit where for important feasts she takes a bit more time to prepare mm -hmm. right so for example um the the feast of the for example saint peter and saint paul which we celebrate i think on 28th or 29th june mm -hmm. uh, if the, the celebration begins the evening before mm -hmm. If you go for Mass the evening before, the church was already saying the Vigil Mass in preparation for that big feast. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. A feast like uh, the Immaculate Conception that we celebrated last month in December, on December 8th, the church again takes um, maybe nine days to prepare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christmas, we took, I think, 30-something days. I don't remember how long Advent is, but mm -hmm. again, a number of days to prepare. Right. Uh, Easter is the same, the, same, take the whole yeah. of Lent, 40 yeah. days to prepare. So in this case, to prepare for this feast of the conversion of St. Paul, the church has set aside seven days. Mm -hmm. um, right now, actually, it's eight days because we celebrate the octave, right? eight days of preparation. Yeah. So from the 18th to the 25th mm -hmm. of, uh, of January, every year, the church tries to pray in a very special way mm -hmm. for for this unity of Christians. All right. I want us to take a very short commercial break. When we come back, we're still uh, talking about this date, uh, 18th to 25th. You'll realize, as you've actually said, they fall on the fifth, or the, the, the 25th is the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, right? Correct. Uh, is it symbolical or something? Okay, mm -hmm. I'll request you to elaborate that as soon as we come back. My dear listener, 0712223385 is the SMS line or on Facebook page, Radio Mini 88.3 FM.
minutes past the hour, we are here with my brother Ramba Idealis and talking about the week of prayer for Christian unity. What is it that you want to know? 0712-223385 still remains the SMS line. And Bonaram, you've actually told us um, about the 18th and 25th and something that has come up in your explanation is that the 25th is the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. Talking about these dates, Bonaram, is it, uh, is it symbolic or something? Um, honestly, I do not know the answer to that question. Mm. I do not know why specifically the church chose the 25th of January to celebrate um, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. Yeah. I do know that um, for some other feasts, there's a way we calculate them. So, for example, Christmas, uh, the very first date that Christians were concerned to establish was uh, when Christ died and mm. when he resurrected. Mm -hmm. And then from there they were able and and easter moves because we still calculate it using the jewish um the way the jews today calculate when the passover should be held etc mm -hmm. and then from there we can get christmas from christmas you can get um days like the presentation in the temple the the um the, the epiphany and all of these things yeah. but specifically about why mm -hmm. 25th of january mm -hmm. for the conversion of St. Paul that I do not know. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, talking about uh, the week of prayer for Christian unity, what is expected for us Christians during this week of prayer for Christian unity? Um, I think the answer is already in the question itself. Uh -huh. So if we call this a week of prayer yeah. for Christian unity, mm -hmm. then certainly one of the things that is expected is prayer okay. for Christian unity. Uh -huh. um, and then now we can ask ourselves, okay, what kind of prayer should we be offering up for, for Christian unity? Mm -hmm. And um, here I think we can um, give a few examples, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, which is the greatest prayer um, that we can offer up to God? Certainly, I would argue it is the prayers that God himself has given us. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. So there are prayers that we ourselves have written, the prayers that we ourselves have composed, um, but the prayers that always, always um, take the top of the list are prayers that God himself has given us. And mm -hmm. that's why the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, is um, among the prayers at the very top of the list. Mm -hmm. and in fact, I don't think it's any coincidence that this is a prayer that um, practically all Christians will can pray and do pray together, okay. the Our Father, right? Mm -hmm. But here I was also thinking one step further, which is the greatest prayer on earth is always the Mass. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. The Mass. The Mass is because it's a prayer offered by Christ himself to the Father. Yeah. And all we do is join ourselves. We, we kind of uh, make ourselves part of Christ in offering up this prayer of petition, of thanksgiving, of, of adoration um, to Christ, to, mm -hmm. to God the Father himself. Mm -hmm. So which is the best prayer we can offer to attend the Mass? If you can in these days, uh, if on all days, if possible on all days, please go on all days. If mm -hmm. only possible on the Sunday that falls in these days or on the 25th itself, please, if you can, do go for Mass mm -hmm. and pray to God for, for this unity that we so desire mm -hmm. you know, in, in the church. Okay. And talking about uh, the unity that we so much desire, Bonaram, so what is this Christian unity that we're talking about here and praying for? 
so this unity is is something that I think can be looked at from different levels. Right. On one, um, we we obviously the the unity we are praying for is something spiritual, right? Mm-hmm. So Saint Paul, for example, when writing, I think it was the, to the Corinthians, speaks about the mm, the mystical body of Christ and mm-hmm. says Christ is ahead and we are the members, but we are not all the same. Mm-hmm. Right, we it's like the human body, you have different parts. We belong to the same body, but we're different parts, different and parts each part true. has different functions. Yeah, so when we're praying for uh, unity here, we're not praying to be identical. Okay, okay, that's not the idea. Mm-hmm. We're not praying that we are all the same, the same. Mm-hmm. but we are praying that in our different functions and in our different forms, that we have that essential unity that any living body has mm-hmm. or should have. Okay. So this unity then will express itself in certain manifestations. So, for example, in our human body, the the body that you and I have, there is a certain unity where some things are shared. So, for example, if um, if you're sick, if your liver is sick or something, it shows in other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. You know, your eyes become a bit yellow. You have weakness. You get tired. You're sweating a bit more. Your urine is like this, etc., etc. So there's a certain way in which the whole body. Um, you could say like joins in that illness or expresses the illness mm-hmm. that is there, right? Okay. And similarly speaking, when things are good, it's the whole body that enjoys. So when you eat with your mouth and your stomach mm-hmm. and you're digesting everything, the whole body enjoys all of this, right? So this, I think, is something that we also mentioned much earlier when we were speaking about the mystical body of Christ, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So in the same way, there are also should be physical manifestations of this unity among all Christians. Mm-hmm. Uh, and which are they? I think, fortunately, we can say in the Catholic Church, we already enjoy some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking here, for example, of we have unity in worship. Mm-hmm. And I think this is something beautiful in the Catholic Church. So, for example, if you attend a Mass here in in Luya or mm-hmm. in Doluo, mm-hmm. you know, and then tomorrow, because you're doing so well, na, you jump on a plane on a Ruka Hadis G, um, Bermuda mm. or to Jamaica or to the ends of the earth in New Zealand, etc., and you attend a Catholic Mass, you have a very good idea of what's going on, even if you don't understand, understand the, language, the language. That is true. You know? yeah. Because it's, it's just it's the exact same thing you've been having at home, it's just a different language, yeah. right? In fact, in days past, I would say, especially before Vatican II, mm-hmm it was even more noticeable. Why? Because the language was even the same. Mm-hmm. Anywhere you went for Mass, the Mass was in Latin. Latin, yeah. Right? And that was one more visible sign of unity. Mm-hmm. Now the Church has given permission to to use uh, whatever vernacular language you want. It doesn't have to be Latin, right? Some mm-hmm. people still prefer to say it in Latin when they can. Uh, bishops give them permission as need be, etc. Mm-hmm. But I think this is one, one way in which we express that unity. There is unity in worship, mm-hmm. okay? There's also unity in the sacraments, mm-hmm. okay? So if you are transferred from here and imagine uh, you move to another country but you still want your children to be baptized or you still want them to receive First Holy Communion or your your mother needs anointing of the sick, etc., right? Mm-hmm. The sacraments are the same wherever you go. The mm-hmm. means that Christ has left for us to be sanctified and to make it to heaven are the same wherever you go, right? right? Mm-hmm. So there's also unity in the sacraments. Um, we also have unity in, in doctrine, mm-hmm. okay? What do we believe does not change where you go, mm-hmm. okay? Whether you are inland or outland, <laughs> whether you are... Um, the, the doctrine is the same. All of us can say the creed meaning exactly the same thing mm-hmm. wherever it is that we go, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the unity can also be seen in... in many other like physical manifestations of mm-hmm. it you know ac- across the world but these were some of the examples that that came to mind that when we seek about unity this is what we are aiming for mm-hmm. right this is what um christ himself was praying for that that they may be one just as you and i father are one okay and uh, as you are talking i'm looking at, uh, at this year's theme uh, that has actually that is coming from the gospel according according to uh, the, the gospel according to saint luke chapter 10 verse 20, 27 and it says you shall love the lord your god and your neighbor as yourself you you'll realize Bonaram, the theme and our ecumenical prayer uh, is a clarion call 
to all of us as Christians to continuously practice Christian ethos. Correct. Talk of character, yes. talk, talk of credibility, mm. talk of moral values, talk of, in, in everything Correct. that we're actually undergoing in all the circumstances for, the, for, for, for that matter. How can we as Christians work towards this unison that you're talking about here? So, uh, number one uh, idea that comes to mind here is um, something that Pope Francis himself has been repeating throughout his pontificate. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you, you capture it very well by reading out the, th the theme for, for this year, mm -hmm. you know, to love one another. And, um, and here, love is, is deeds. It's not sweet words. Yeah. I'm reminded of an experience one priest had back in the 30s mm -hmm. where he was, um, he was a chaplain of a convent of nuns. Mm -hmm. okay? Among the duties he had, he was asked, hey, could you also be saying mass and celebrating the sacraments for these nuns? So this one time, he, he went to celebrate mass for them. And during communion time, mm -hmm. as he was distributing communion and saying the usual words, the priest says, you know, the body of Christ and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Inside his heart, he was telling Jesus, uh, my Lord, I love you more than this one. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I love you more than this nun. Or I, I love you more than this other nun. And, you know, mm -hmm. and he, this priest was, was writing and saying that he had within himself the words from Christ saying, Love is deeds, not sweet words. Not sweet words. Uh -huh. Love is deeds, not sweet words. Mm -hmm. So thinking about that and the theme for this year's um, prayer, week of prayer for Christian unity, and also thinking about the pontificate of uh, Pope Francis, mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing that, look, yes, we have the true faith, but it must also be seen. Mm -hmm. It's not sweet words. It yeah. must also be seen. It's not simply that we profess the same creed. Mm -hmm. No, we also live out the same love. That our unity is also in the way we love. Mm -hmm. Has to be tangible mm -hmm. with, with our family, with our friends, with the poor, with the sick, with the elderly. Mm -hmm. it, must also be, it must also be seen there. So what can you and I do mm -hmm. in order to live out this love concretely mm -hmm. in deeds? Um, I would say number one is to love indeed the people you live with the mm -hmm. people you work with first and foremost you know as mother teresa would say forget about all those people is in the slums of start with the people in your own home oh, yeah you know yeah how can i love this person the way jesus loves them mm -hmm. not even loved loves, loves continues to love exactly them. yeah what can i what does it mean mm -hmm. Is it that I need to correct them on a point? Is it that I need to um, help them a bit more with this task or another task, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it is, right? Yeah. And then after that, that now that's where now we go out into the, the highways and the byways as we read in the gospel and now look after these people who are poor and these people who are sick and these people who are disabled and these people who are elderly, mm -hmm. right? But it has to start at home. Right. This is also something that Saint John Paul the Great would say that you know your your love has to begin at home. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one thing we could really do to to um, live out this this theme of of love. Just begin at home by fostering the unity of love in your own house, mm -hmm. in your own places of work. The mm -hmm. people you usually meet with on a day to day basis mm -hmm. start there. Okay. And talking about, you've used the word love, and I like the way you put it, not just sweet words, but the action itself. And I'm looking, today is um, the day six of the, this uh, particular uh, week of prayer, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the reflection uh, of today that is coming from the Gospel of St. Luke, uh, chapter, 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 35. You'll discover that this is a story of a man who fell in the hands of a robber, mm -hmm. okay? And he was cared for by a Samaritan. So the Samaritan saw beyond prejudice and Correct. bias, yes. okay? And you realize that there is always something that is hindering most of us to actually practice what I'll call ecumenical hospitality. Correct. Talk of societal prejudice, talk of traditional prejudice, talk of uh, gender prejudice, talk of um, religion prejudice. Mm. How can we rise above this so that we can actually practice this ecumenical hospitality? I, th I would say, first of all, um, it's, it, takes, it takes Jesus to do this. It is not easy at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, th I think the reason many of us fall into all these prejudices that you mentioned mm -hmm. is because it's not easy. 
That is true. It's not easy to love somebody from another tribe. It's yeah. not easy to love somebody from another church. It's mm -hmm. not easy to love somebody from another. Why? Because they just don't see things the way I see them. And I wonder, yeah. surely this should be so clear to you. Mbona, you know, yes. it's, it's, it's difficult, right? <laughs> um, but that's when we are speaking of things from a, a, a human perspective. When I think about things from human love, mm -hmm. what do we need? Christ's love, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. That I might not have that human love for you, but I can use Christ's love and love you with that. Okay. So at the end of the day here, I think what we really should be asking for is the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, as one saint would say that, uh, you know, telling Jesus, you know, I want to love people with your love. Mine mm -hmm. is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not anywhere near enough, but I want to love people with the love that you have for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So I think the first thing is, is precisely takes us back to prayer, that we need to pray, we need to pray that we ourselves can be like Christ, that mm -hmm. we ourselves can can have the love of Christ in us, can have that Holy Spirit in us so that we have that mm -hmm. supernatural mm -hmm. strength, supernatural willingness mm -hmm. to, to love these people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then from there now we can find ways of, of making it concrete, okay. you know, whether it is people in my own family or people in the organization where I work or where I'm hustling or where I'm studying, etc. Now if I have Christ's love within me, yes, I should be able now to move and begin to love them. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. And let me, let, let me take you back where you said something about um, uh, how the church is one. And you said that the church, this oneness you're talking about here, we're not talking about being identical. Correct. All right? Yeah. Yes. And there is unity in diversity. Correct. And the, when we talk about unity in diversity, there is an element of dialogue. Correct. How can we practice ecumenical dialogue? for us to foster unity in diversity. So um, you've actually reminded me of some material I was reading during December. Um, I was trying to research a bit on this fiducia supplicans mm -hmm. and all the drama that, that has come surrounding it, etc., yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. And um, it reminded me of, of two things. One is something that Pope Francis mentioned to the bishops of Germany. Mm -hmm. And second is something that there's a, a colleague, a teacher we used to teach together, mm -hmm. um, used to tell students mm -hmm. who came to him and saying, hey, look, sir, I want to become a Catholic, mm -hmm. you know. And he would ask them, but what, what religion are you? And they would give different answers depending, you know, I'm Anglican, I'm Presbyterian, I'm Baptist, etc. And the first thing he would tell them is, look, if you want to become a Catholic, mm -hmm then be the best Baptist you can be. All right. If you want to become a Catholic, become be the best Anglican you can you be can first. Be. Start yes. there. Uh -huh. Right? And then later on, we can now speak about this thing about becoming Catholic. Because when you're becoming Catholic, you're, mm -hmm. you're taking on more. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and I was thinking about it theologically later, and you realize, I mean, even sacramentally speaking, I yeah. mean, the Catholic Church has, has the seven sacraments, all sacraments. All mm -hmm. other churches have fewer, so mm -hmm. have less sacraments, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a sense in which if you're moving from one of these other um, um, ecclesial communities to the Catholic Church, you, you are taking on more, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're taking on the, the communion of saints and the, the cult of the saints and, and, and all of these other things, mm -hmm. right? So I think there is that one element of um, th the other ecclesial community, the other churches, also have something to offer. To offer yeah. So our dialogue mm -hmm. precisely begins by acknowledging mm -hmm. that they too have mm -hmm. a share in the truth of Christ. Mm -hmm. They may not have what we call the fullness of truth, mm -hmm. right? Um, in fact, when I was reading on this fiducia supplicants, one thing that came up was the last time we had a document like this from the, they call it the dicastery yeah. of, uh, of the faith, you mm -hmm. know, basically the ministry in the Vatican that deals with, with the dogmas and the faith and what we believe, etc., was precisely in the pontificate of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, and they released a document called Dominus Jesus. Mm -hmm. Basically, they were saying the church is the one holy Catholic uh, apostolic church, is the one true church. And yeah. people were like, why would you want to say that? I mean, we are here trying to build things. Now people think we are proud, we are haughty, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of thing, etc. Um, and I think one point there is, is, is this thing of 
the other churches also have a share in the truth. Mm -hmm. It might be the case, yes, that the Catholic Church has the fullness of it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that the other churches are completely wrong. No, mm -hmm. they also have some truth. So our dialogue begins by acknowledging that, mm -hmm. yes, they too have a share in that um, truth of Christ, in that revelation of Christ, mm -hmm. and to that extent, we can already agree. We already have common ground. Yeah. So when we are speaking, we begin from there. What are the things we already agree on? Mm -hmm. What are the things we already um, hold together? The things we already believe together? Let's start there. Okay. And then we can now from there work out these other things that you guys say, no, it's only scripture. We say, well, scripture, yes, but mm -hmm. also tradition and mm -hmm. the magisterium of the church or et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. So I think dialogue, I would say, begins with what we already hold in common. Common. Uh -huh. And then from there we can now debate and see, okay, fine. Is it a question that we misunderstand each other, mm -hmm. which, which is the case many times, you yeah. know, like with this thing of sola scriptura, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, what the Protestant uh, brethren are saying is true, right? Mm -hmm. Sal salvation is by faith yeah. alone. Mm -hmm. But when the church comes and says, no, no, it's faith and works, it's also true. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we're using faith in two different senses mm -hmm. here, okay? So sometimes it's, it's misunderstanding on both sides. Mm -hmm. So the dialogue here is is not a very simple, straightforward. You're wrong. I'm right. Full stop. No, mm -hmm. no, no. Sometimes we, we have to <laughs> we have to think a bit deeper, and yeah. you know this kind of thing. But the advice I've always read and seen is always begin with what we hold in common, mm -hmm. and and then from there let's pray together what we can and mm -hmm. and keep moving forward. And begin from where you are. Okay, yes. I like what you said. Okay, that be the best Anglican that you can be, be the best Catholic that you can be. Correct. And talking about being the best, uh, Bonaram, you realize again this uh, story, the reflection about the Samaritan and the stranger here. Mm -hmm. You'll discover that this Samaritan saw someone. In in need and brought him into an inn Correct. okay Correct. to be taken care of, uh, care of so you realize that that is a challenge that is being thrown to you and me and the listener that a time has come where we need to change or to turn our hearts into that inn that can actually invite those uh, neighbors who Correct. are also in need Correct. is there a possibility that you can reach that level one around Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that so confidently is because we have seen it happen. Mm -hmm. We have seen it happen in the saints who have lived among us mm -hmm. and with us. I'm thinking here of uh, people like um, St. Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. You know, you have very many stories of people who she took care of when they were dying, when they were picked up from the streets, and just took care of them with with that love you know the love that jesus himself would would have for them right mm -hmm. in fact now i remember i don't know if we have time for another story <laughs> <laughs> proceed proceed no problem so there's this story of a gentleman precisely who was left abandoned in the gutters of of calcutta dying yeah. you mm -hmm. know and mother teresa and her her daughters there precisely their vocation was to take care of the poorest of the poor mm -hmm. especially those who are dying and you know so they would take them into their their mother house there in calcutta and the way i understand they do things when you bring in one of these uh dying people or the poor people etc a nun is assigned to take care of each of them mm -hmm. okay so it's like almost like in hospitals where you have a doctor who's in charge of a very specific patient mm -hmm. so this last gentleman who was taken into the house was in a sense in that sense assigned to mother Teresa. so mother Teresa was the one taking care of him you mm -hmm. know uh, the guy was very badly off physically so of course first you know with the medication and things trying to get him and then finally the man regained consciousness you know several days later um later we learned that the man was not christian or anything you know he was one of these hindus but uh, mother teresa one was taking care of him and feeding him and you know cleaning him and all of these kind of things etc um and eventually uh, days later this gentleman asked mother teresa look are you jesus oh, mother teresa was a bit surprised <laughs> what do you mean am, am i jesus, jesus i mean i'm a woman uh -huh. jesus is a, what do you mean i mean this guy ascended into heaven yes. years ago Say so, no, no. I've, I've heard something about Jesus, and you seem to fit the description, you know, in that mm -hmm. in that manner of speaking, right? Um, why? Because just simply because of the way she handled the man, the mm -hmm. way she took care of the man, you know, it's like if if Jesus, he would be like this, right? 
So yes, it is very possible mm-hmm. because the saints have done it, and and it doesn't just take a saint. You know, sometimes we're like, yeah, but that's a nun mm-hmm. who lived, I don't know what, and she had a vocation, etc. I mean, many times we also think about it the way we ourselves take care of our wives, mm-hmm. or we take care of our children, or the way our parents have taken care of us, or even between a boyfriend and a girlfriend. I mean, that love of Christ should shine through. Okay, you know, um, and that's where we begin training ourselves mm-hmm. now for more um demanding situations like in the case of the of the samaritan mm-hmm. right because in the parable of the samaritan um maybe we can throw this in there the problem was the jews did not get along with the samaritans that is true okay there was a whole history towards it the, mm-hmm. the jews considered them as impure mm-hmm. because why these guys had been uh, in the first deportation not the one into babylon the one mm-hmm. where they were taken up um to assyria i think it was and they intermarried mm-hmm. okay and then they now came back to resettle in 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 samaria precisely so they didn't consider these guys as you guys are not really children of abraham you mm-hmm. guys have been polluted you mm-hmm. you've, you've intermarried and you know this kind of thing etc so we do not mix with you guys right you also remember the story of jesus at the well and the samaritan woman oh, who money. came there and mm-hmm. she asked how how do you a jew ask me a samaritan for water, for water? Mm-hmm. We, we don't mix yeah. you know and we can think about this in our modern day context even among our, our different tribes mm-hmm. and our among our perhaps you can even stretch it to you know arsenal and my new supporters <laughs> we know we don't we don't mix etc etc right yeah but um jesus was able to say no 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 mm-hmm. the, the the important thing here is your salvation the mm-hmm. important thing here is your happiness what does god want for you okay. and i will allow god to use me mm-hmm. in order to bring you you know closer to him mm-hmm. so yes we can live that um love we need god's grace for it we need to pray for it but we also need to play our part mm-hmm. okay and i like though you put it because there isn't a story of us that question balaram you'll understand that we live in um in an era where we tend to have a lot of mistrust with our neighbors Correct. okay yeah. and that is exactly what what he, what he, what has prompted me to ask that particular question but aram our time is actually up but i'll uh, actually give you a minute or so to give your parting shot as we conclude well parting shot is precisely what uh, this week of prayer is for which is just to pray okay mm-hmm. and and the prayer here for us as catholics i mean we 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 are blessed with so many options whether it's the mass as mm-hmm. we were mentioning earlier um to pray the rosary in these days with a friend or two um, um maybe praying for this maybe in your small christian community in mm-hmm. Jumuia or in your family uh, to pray for this thing or oh, it's just trying to precisely express that love you know that you've just been reminding us about right now mm-hmm. um with the watchman in the estate where you live mm-hmm. or the, the the lady who prepares tea or whatever it is you know to to let that love of christ shine through All right. right i think that's what i would say is my part in to church. let the love of christ shine through I like that Bonaram. Sante sana. Thank you for coming. Uh looking forward to having you uh in our subsequent shows. Sante. Okay, my dear listener, that has been our time. It is exactly 10 and Violet will be here for news highlights and we'll be coming back with the third hour. Don't go too far.